Hi, I'm Layla Salvade. Welcome to the Lifestyle Interview Series. Today, I'm so excited to speak with Stephanie Wang. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Layla. <laughs> Stephanie is an entrepreneur, consciousness seeker, and navigator. So, uh, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me here. I would love, so we met at this incredible event mm -hmm. um, at the Alchemist Kitchen. That's right. You actually reminded me when you were telling me about your story yeah. and how you started your company in Standing Light, and um, which was very inspiring, by the way, Thank and it was you. wonderful. And um, it actually, in some ways, made me think back, uh, ironically, about how we all started. Because with business, as you know, and with startups, you're so busy all the time. You're just really trying to get by mm -hmm. initially, just trying to survive and get to the next day. And you're like, oh my god, how are we going to do that? And sometimes you lose track when you're so in the weeds of, mm -hmm. of everyday survival, and you, you, you know you kind of. And but of course, the drive for that survival comes from a vision or comes from an inspiration. Right. And it's really helpful to kind of sometimes step back and look at what originally that motivation was. Mm -hmm. And so it was really lovely talking to you because it made me think of you know oh wow you know if I take a pause and think of where we started off. And where I start off, and then how I ended up here, was is is incredible, actually. So I grew up in Hong Kong, okay. and uh, I actually grew up in a very conservative, you know, typical Chinese family where you're expected to be a doctor, a lawyer, a business person. Right. <laughs> and um, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. And uh, I actually, you know, started off. I went to. I grew up in Hong Kong, but then I went to school in the U.S. and the U.K. and uh, went to Wharton and then Oxford and then really was on track to um, be in investment banking, which is what I did, because that's what all w good Wharton graduates do. <laughs> and so um, I started off at Salman Brothers, and it was you know, in corporate finance, and it was very grueling, um, great training, but definitely not so, not so much me. Um, I then felt a calling to go back to Hong Kong, so I was there, but still I was in finance. I worked for a short period of time with my family, but that was little challenging so went back into finance and that second time really got me to the point where I was like you know this is this is great it's financially lucrative but it's not really serving my well-being and I just you know I feel really toxic so I had a major catharsis at that point and decided to just leave and come back to the US and to New York and decided to go into film of all things wow. and um, it wasn't, I mean, if you ask me why film, I couldn't, I could kind of maybe trace it back to a couple of things and conversations I had, but because it was so completely opposite of what I did, and also where I had no family members, no friend, really there was no connection to it at all, and it was so completely foreign, that I trusted it, ironically, and it just felt right, and I think it's one of the first times, because I'm a very sort of trained to be in my head, mind kind of person, and it was the first time I really trusted my instincts, my gut, and my heart. And I go, oh, that just that feels right. Can I do this? Okay, and I just moved here, and that's what I started doing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, it was really tough because what I really had to do was to really shake that mind frame or the mindset of you know being in sort of a very structured environment where there is a very set path and to go into a creative field which really is a completely different brain yeah right completely so that was um, that was interesting and I actually basically cocooned myself I didn't go home for like three years because I really wanted just to immerse, um, immerse myself in a way and it's it was really tough I have to say initially it was really hard and ultimately became very liberating, but that was a that was a difficult process. And then from that point on, I um, so I was in film. I was um, in front of an, and behind the camera, and I ended up being in producing, both narrative fiction and in documentary. And at that point, I realized that what I really loved was um, storytelling, um, because even my last job in finance, which was as an equity analyst, was really about telling stories about companies. And and I I you know the one. It would, I could say that that's the one aspect that really kept me alive yeah. in that process, um, even though it was a bit of a drag. Uh, so that, I realized, was a through line, and then into film. And then um, it got to a point where I just, I was like, you know, this is, making film takes a long time. 
and, and I love it, but it's like it takes a long time. What can I do? You know, I love technology. I love social media. What can I do to actually do something that has you know quicker impact in some ways, right. and I can see the result faster and. And so I actually moved from that into starting my company doing content strategy and digital marketing. Um, and that's what we did. And so we did campaigns, uh, video campaigns for companies, and we did other social media campaigns with site builds and content strategy and, and marketing, online digital marketing. And that was cool, but it still wasn't it. Still wasn't it. And I think the, when, um, one of the biggest things that, I, that, that really is not on my resume, but has been such a through line, is actually the consciousness seeker. So through the time when I left investment banking, um, I just realized that what drove me and what has always guided me is, um, I would say, personal transformation and raising my own consciousness and awareness in the world. And in the toughest times, that's what got me through. And that's very different from religion. That's not, I'm talking about spirituality. Absolutely. and finding what resonates with myself and then creating meaning and purpose from that. Mm -hmm. So that really was, I would say, kept me um, very connected, very, very um, nourished mm -hmm. in a way that could help me through all these transitions. Because it was tough. I mean, I had to rebuild my network. It was, you know, and, and even then, I mean, I, it, you know, all those moves that I made was, were not supported really by my family. Right. I mean, they were they were great. I mean, they were great in many ways, but it wasn't. They were all always waiting for me to go back home. <laughs> so, and I never did. <laughs> they were like, you know, she'll get over it. She'll, you know, realize, you know, what about, what how foolish she is, and she'll come back home. But um, <laughs> my parents were still waiting for me to go home. <laughs> right. So you can relate to that. Absolutely. And so um, it got to a point where I was like, wow, you know, that's that's totally not my path, and what I'm doing now is absolutely right. What I think was interesting is how how each again each step of the way when I started my own company and then and then the next step which is how I came into Evolver and the Alchemist Kitchen was you could say serendipitous, mm -hmm. um, but really very guided. So I got to a point where I was like, you know, I really want to bring that consciousness um, that I've kind of cultivated and what motivates me and what I want to bring to the world into the world and into my work so mm -hmm. that I have an integrated life, right? Because I don't want to have a life where it's disjointed where, okay, I have my work and then I have my interests and then I have my personal life. You know, I would love for all of it to be, it's just more efficient. Right. There's only so much time in the day, right? Exactly. So why not be that aligned and which I believe is, is where you can become really empowered. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as that desire came, you know, lo and behold, I met some. I met certain people along the way, and um, I would keep sharing this now. So I would kind of project it out in the world, and then what came back was amazing because literally out of the blue, this one guy I met totally randomly. He was like, "Well, I'm coming to New York." I met met him in Hong Kong actually, and he's like, "I'm coming to New York, and uh, can I stay with you?" And I was like, "I just met you," but then I was guided. Like I just felt right for him to you know have him stay with me. Yeah. My boyfriend at the time was like, "I am not having that at all. You're not having some random man stay with you." So he so he actually ended up staying in my boyfriend's apartment, and then my boyfriend stayed with me. Um, but it worked out great because wh while this person was here, um, he just asked me out to to certain meetings, and I didn't. I had no idea who it was. I just said yes. Mm -hmm. Literally, I just showed up and just said yes, not knowing at all from one moment to the next who I was meeting. You just followed my heart. Guy, I just followed my heart, and I, and I just followed this guy. I was like, okay, and then um, that's how I met the partners that I'm with today. Wow! And I literally met them. They didn't even know who I was. And next thing you know, I was one of the direct directors and the board of directors. And the next thing I know, I was, you know, uh, a cr uh, one of the three executive management team on board. And uh, so at the moment, I'm a director of Evolver, and I'm also the chief brand officer as well. And the Alchemist Kitchen, which you visited, is right. a DBA that we have that is all about the dedication to the power of plants. And uh, we just opened, as you know, mm -hmm. a flagship store in uh, February of this year, 2016, in uh, the Bowery. And we also, this week, are opening at ABC Home. No a way! A second location, yeah. Oh my so god! So it's very excited. Come. Wow, yeah. <laughs> so amazing. It's been a little crazy, but it's fantastic. Yeah, wow, we're very excited, and 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 you know, just when I think about it, and I, I like I said, pausing and looking back and and that whole road. Yeah. So much of it was just about trust, and you know, I think a lot of times people like to talk, you know, kind of skip through. Like when you hear like, oh my god, these success stories, or oh you know, yeah, absolutely. It's like they skip through sometimes the the doubt or the. Um, um, 
the pain and mm -hmm. the struggle. And I mean, I will tell you that I went through many years of that, thinking mm -hmm. I made the biggest mistake. Oh my God, why did I leave finance? Why did I leave something that I was so good at, making yeah. so much money at, and here I am, struggling, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it just, it wasn't, because you know, you get to a point where you have, you're really humbled, mm -hmm. because you're like, well, is it, um, is it just my will? Am I being willful and stupid? Or, I am, or am I being strong and following my heart, right? There's a difference. Yeah. And there's a subtle, but there, I mean, it's a very big difference. And, you know, I always had to check in to see which it was because, you know, sometimes you cannot, you know, being obstinate is, doesn't serve you either. Absolutely. Yeah. What would you say was your darkest moment in those, in everything you just described? Wow, my darkest moments were probably in between um, when I kind of finished producing films and when I switched over to do my, start my own company. And, you know, I had kind of already by that time switched careers several, not my switched career, but switched directions several times. And, you know, I just didn't, I didn't feel like things were happening for me. You know, it was kind of happening. But I was working so hard, I was by myself, and it just felt, you know, it was okay, but it just, it just felt so draining. Yeah. And those are the times where, and I think we, you know, a lot of times we can't help but compare. And I'll like, com you know, compare to my, my peers, and they're all doing so well, and they're all married with kids, and it's like, here I am, I'm single in New York, and there's nothing going on, and I'm like all by myself, and it's like as a woman, and here's the other thing, right? As a woman, their expectations, their cultural expectations, no matter how liberated you are, yeah. you're still programmed a certain way. So their cultural expectations, societal expectations, your own expectations, and that's a lot of pressure. Super. Yeah. Right. And I think the hardest thing I think for and I this is what I believe that that as I see other people go on the same path is to not let that noise and that center of gravity which when you're born that be, you know initially it's your home, your family, your your society, you know, your your community, your um, society, your country, etc. And to be able to go, okay, that's what I was programmed and born into, but that doesn't mean that's who I am necessarily. That's part of who I am. Absolutely. But um, to individuate and to self-actuate, you have to kind of find that own voice. And some people do and some people don't. And it's it's very hard, I think, when you kind of do liftoff initially. It's kind of like blasting off into the orbit. You know, the, the fuel in the engine is really used most when you're trying to leave the gravity of Earth. And then once you're in space, it's fine. That's right? such a good metaphor. Do you know what I mean? That's like it's the momentum yeah. that really, Absolutely. that initial momentum, it's like, oh, like that. So, um, so yeah, so that was, that was the toughest time was in between where I had spent enough years. And by that time I had been, I'd left banking for about, I want to say 10 years. So I'm expecting some results, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm yeah. a productive, efficient person. Yeah. It's like, what? You know? So I think that's another thing that I have to say that it's, it's a very different path when you go on, you know, your own sort of, um, conscious light following path mm -hmm. is timing is kind of not up to you in yeah. many ways and you have to trust and I think that was really hard and those years taught me that mm -hmm. is taught is really teaching me to trust myself trust um, and to have faith in, in life and in, in God and in source and, and just having that guide me no matter how weird sometimes that guidance is because sometimes you know in our own limited mind we cannot comprehend why this is the right thing for me to do. And I think that really was the hardest, is in that darker, that, that stagnant period for me. How do I move from one thing to the next? And what do I trust? Am I, is it my own fantasy, right? My own imagination? Or is it, is it something that I really should be listening to? So what would you say did you listen to? I listened to my heart very much. Yeah. And the way I did that was just to really quiet down so I st started actually doing a lot of meditation work at that mm -hmm. time and really um, giving myself that pause and that time every day almost every day to <laughs> to <laughs> really kind of connect and listen and that's it and and I did I do did a lot of reading I mean I read a lot of spiritual books I went to a lot of different classes I um, I would say that another thing is I kind of went through and tried many different modalities. Mm. Um, so that was a big part as well. What's one of the most powerful modalities you experienced? Ah, 
I would say uh, shamanic plant medicine. Yeah. Tell us about that. So, uh, so how did I discover that initially? I think uh, I, a friend of mine actually was uh, had experienced that in Miami and was a good friend of mine and, and told me about it. And I was like, oh, that sounds fascinating. Sign me up, right? I mean, I'm just like that, so I'll just try whatever yeah. works and see Same what here. see what sticks. And I remember showing up, and I didn't even, I had no idea what was even going to happen. What? Because I, I never even asked the question, right? Was that so, in New York? It was in New York. Okay. And um, I quickly discovered that, that I had a, first, a great first experience. What, what basically happened was we, you know, I, uh, there was a shaman, and it was a shaman who was a very modern shaman, so mm -hmm. it wasn't, you know, no feathers and, and, and crystals and such, just, you know, he was a regular guy. And as it turns out, he's very, he was very, very, he had three PhDs, and he, would, he actually descended from a long line of Peruvian shamans. Wow. So and his mandate was to bring the work from the Amazon to the West. And I very luckily uh, came to one of those gatherings and what they call ceremony. Mm -hmm. So, what happens in plant ceremony is the shaman kind of look, he will, in this particular instance, he gave a little talk, a little lecture, and he uh, would kind of look at you and ask questions a little bit and then decide what he should give you. And these are all, I would say, you know, what people typically think of in shamanic ceremony are plants like San Pedro, ayahuasca, iboga. Um, in this instance, the shaman had, beyond that, actually used a lot of different plants, many of which are available in North America, and, uh, and not necessarily scheduled. So, and I think there are these groups right now in the U.S. that are, um, excuse me, that, that, that uh, for example, the Santo Daime, the Church of Santo Daime, does use <coughs> ayahuasca, and they, they won a court case, basically, to be able to do that and, and show that as a sacrament under the Freedom of Religious Act, mm. Religion Act, excuse me. And... Um, but there is a great lobby for a lot of these uh, plants to actually become legal. So MAPS is a big organization here, very active. That that's a big mandate of theirs is to to be able to actually allow these substances to be or substances these plants to be legal. And you know why were they illegal in the first place? Well, that's a really interesting question because what you know people kind of think of them as. I mean, uh, some of these are psychedelic, some of these are not. And you know, from the '60s, maybe they got a bad rap mm -hmm. from that. Um, but the truth is, there's so much healing power, and you can. There's a lot of research you can find online, and a lot of research that you know um, people are doing here in in the states and Canada and all around the world, of how healing um, these particular plants can be. And these are called master teaching plants and sacred plants for a reason. Mm -hmm. And what uh, what I would like to to say is that w this modality is different in the sense that it's a very accelerated modality. Yeah. It's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, it can be very intense. But what it's actually showing, it's not, it's not, okay, it, it's not that you're, it, it's what they are helping you discover is really to look at what is already happening within yourself, but to magnify it and amplify it so that you can see mm -hmm. and ha gain insight. Again, not for everyone, because obviously you have to watch out for if you're on certain medication, you shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. You should have full consultation and you should absolutely make sure that it's a trusted group, a trusted shaman. Right, because nowadays everyone important. is calling themselves a shaman. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, especially women yeah. have to be very careful because... Yeah. Oh. Go, oh, oh, I know. You know, yeah. because you're in that state and you're in a very vulnerable open state. So right. again, very, 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 I just really want to say and emphasize that finding the right group, finding the right shaman, being in a trusted group, being with your friends, and the attitude you bring and making sure that that's the attitude of the space, meaning respectful, mm -hmm. private, you know, what happens here stays here, it doesn't go beyond, right. um, and you have a safe container. I just read a whole article about how war veterans that suffer from PTSD are using ayahuasca to heal, and it's this phenomenon yes. of, he like, they're healed. It's incredible, so. Yes, and so there's, again, a lot of studies out there, and even, I think, a while ago, and this is not even recent, this has been a couple years ago at least, Lisa Ling did a whole CNN special on ayahuasca. She went down to the Amazon. Um, I think since then, a lot of, this has become much more mainstream, I would say, in the last three years. Yes. In particular, somehow yeah. it's just accelerated, and there are groups happening all over the place, and I know we're, we were joking earlier. We're in we're in the Wall Street area right now, and you know the funny thing is, you would be surprised. And I was saying, like you people would be surprised who actually is doing this. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that it's not hippy dippy people. No, not at all. It's very motivated, driven CEOs, 
heads of corporations, heads of organizations, um, and of course artists and musicians and everybody else in between. Yeah. But it's really, and, and another thing I want to say is, is, is what's interesting is because I hear the dialogue a lot. It's like, yes, it's great for healing, you know, whether you have certain, certain kinds of ailments or, or um, diseases, but it's also great for someone who doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be so traumatized to, to want to do this. It's Absolutely. About, see, it's about growing yourself. It's about coming more into the light. It's about um, learning to access more of your own insight and wisdom. Mm -hmm. and that's about self-actualization. So I think that that you know, there's, it doesn't have to be like you know you you need to do it because to, you, have you have something. You have some major thing you need to fix. No, and it's I not agree. About fixing anyway. No, you know, so it's about enlightening exactly and, and purging and, what does not serve your highest purpose. Right, and I would say though, I would take that a little further, and I would say it's it's not you know in this practice what what it is is it's not actually disassociating because sometimes purging and releasing yes releasing mm -hmm. part of it, but you know what our history no matter how painful oh yeah no matter how challenging is will always be part of us a hundred percent right yeah and so it's not about getting rid of it it's more about integrating embracing it. it embracing it loving it integrating it realizing wow this was my experience and how can I why, how has this made me the person that I am, and how do I honor that within myself? That's no a very matter, good distinction, yeah. Right, no matter how traumatic, no matter how difficult, no matter how painful. Um, so, you know, it's interesting, I think earlier we were talking about Burning Man, and that's another, you know, and, and which has become, you know, 10 years ago, so, so fringe. It's mm. like, what's that? It's <laughs> weird people in the desert, what are they doing, you know? <laughs> and then now it's like super hip, and everybody's doing it, and there's this whole controversy now. It's like, oh, people are selling out. But, you know, it, it's a really interesting to me in, again, I would say these last three or four years, how it's really accelerated to the point where it's become much more mainstream. Yeah. And still not everybody knows what I'm, you know, what we're talking about right. here, but um, it's great that we can talk about it. Like I would definitely not feel comfortable talking about this even as recently as two, two years ago. Yeah, yeah, same here, I agree. So it's, it's great. And this has been, by the way, all of this plant medicine work, and, and this is one of the many modalities I work in, but I'm glad you asked me about this particular one because it's actually what inspired me to join Evolver, mm. which is a conscious lifestyle company. Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, that. which is which actually was based way back when it was started nine years ago mm. by the founders, the original founders. Um, it was a safe place for people to discuss these topics. Mm. It was a community of people where you know you could because there really was no place you could do that. Yeah. Um, and you know these are these were awesome guys and they. Um, brought together a lot of thought leaders, a lot of teachers and healers who were knowledgeable in that area and, and made a little vortex created out of space. it. Created a space. Created a space for it and started uh, the first actually um, piece that, we, that was started was the digital magazine Reality Sandwich, which still exists today. Um, and it's basically a magazine of ideas where you, where, you know, you, the topics that are covered range anything from shamanism, plant medicine, to sacred geometry, to sound healing, sound meditation. Um, all kinds of these sorts of topics. And then from there, we started Evolver Learning Lab. And Evolver Learning Lab is an online learning platform where, again, you have, because of what, it made sense, it's like all these people were contributing articles, and it's like, oh, what can we do to create a business model? Oh, we can actually have courses mm -hmm. online. And, and, and that was kind of the beginning of, you know, making ourselves uh, a little bit more self-sustaining was, was doing that. And uh, so all of these wonderful teachers would be you know, sharing their knowledge and wisdom in these particular areas. And then from that point on, um, Lou Segar, the CEO, joined, our CEO currently joined the company, and this must have been three and a half years ago. Is that right? Yeah. And he started the e-commerce side because he goes, oh, now we have this community who's interested in learning and self-directed transformation. Mm -hmm. What kinds of products, what do they need? What do they, what are they interested in? So we started off um, providing sustainable lifestyle products, uh, for tools for sustainable living, rather, and then we would quickly discovered that what people were interested in were plants and botanical remedies, alternatives to pharmaceuticals, right? But going even way before, be, way beyond that, because I think a lot of people are wary of, of you know, commercial pharmaceuticals that have all these side effects, and it's like they're not really helping, mm -hmm. and you know, what, what other ways um, can we, you know, what can we do? And so I would say that's the initial touch point usually, is that there's something, maybe a body ailment or a pain point, and then it's like, oh, the conventional ways are not working, mm -hmm. what can I it's do? It's deeper. It's much deeper. Usually th what's behind that is a lot of emotional, right. psychological trauma, yeah. right? And then you discover, whoa, you know, the body is a way to, the e in many ways, uh, an easy access point. But then beyond that, it's like, what's the mind doing? What are my habitual 
patterned thinking. Mm -hmm. um, what is that like, and why am I doing it? Is that contributing to my negative, you know, negative way of being, and and how is that negatively impacting my life? So then, from that point on, we uh, realized people were really interested in this, and we started the AlchemistKitchen.com, which was online. Oh. Mm -hmm. First, it was online, and then. Um, we realized, you know, people need to smell, taste, feel, test it it's out. It's a sensory you know. experience. It's a sensory experience. And so we realized quickly that we needed a physical touch point. And lo and behold, this wonderful space literally showed up. Literally showed up already ready, mm -hmm. right? Right? And so <laughs> I just want to add why Layla's day is saying, of course, <laughs> is because, you know, what is great is that when you're aligned, with your light <laughs> and you're standing in it, yes. you are shown. Literally everything is revealed, right? The so, universe just guides you. Right, the universe just guides. And so this space literally showed up and I remember going and, and looking at it and I just was like, oh my God, this this is already done. And by the time, uh, by the way, at that point we were just looking for a space to do a little pop-up. Like a little 10 by 10 pop-up. Yeah, and that this place isn't it. a pop-up, it's no, beautiful. No, so so we were thinking, oh, we'll just rent it for like a weekend and we'll yeah. try it out, <laughs> do a little pop-up. Next thing you know, we took the whole first floor. Next thing you know, we took the second floor. And it's a 6,000 square foot space, yeah. top and bottom. And it now has a whole plantonic bar up top that serves state-changing elixirs. <laughs> that are based Stage on Stage what? State-changing elixirs. State-changing elixirs, wow. That are based, um, actually, excuse me, that are based on our proprietary formulations that combine scientific crafting with indigenous wisdom and ancient wisdom practices mm -hmm. drawn from Ayurveda, shamanic plant medicine, um, Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, European folkloric herbalism, um, yeah, and all of those, pr the, all of those uh, disciplines mm -hmm. and bringing it together in a very contemporary, delicious, fun way, an educational way. So mm -hmm. we have that tonic bar, which also uh, serves food. So we have a lot of great, healthy, pr predominantly vegan and mm -hmm. gluten-free you know, offerings. And we also have a botanical dispensary, which is where, which actually showcases um, a, a portion, I would say, of what we offer online in terms of products. And we have a herbalist there every day. And we have an area where we call, you know, it's our plant alchemy little section. And that's an area where you can do a deeper dive. So we have very special products there that philosophically, a lot of them are based on the plant medicine shamanic ceremon ceremonial work that I just talked about. So there are whole plant essences that are uh, made in an alchemical way, which combine the mind, bo mind, body, and spirit of the plant, not just the usual way people do tinctures, um, which just has, from an alchemical standpoint, just the mind of the plant. Mm -hmm. um, we have CBD, we carry CBD, which is which is legal, of course, but, and all, by all this is legal, of course, but um, it's harder to get because it's just a, a burgeoning a new area, mm -hmm. and people don't really know that much about it. So we also recently, within the Alchemist Kitchen, we launched something called the Bowery Cannabis Club, Specifically because of the of the growing movement to legalize cannabis, mm -hmm. um, you know there is great interest now um, because of that in the medicinal and healthful yeah. know, healthy impact yeah. of what the plant does, yeah. which is amazing. And most people don't realize it's like fantastic for for it's it's can be very beneficial for people with PTSD, Epilepsy. ADHD, ADHD, epilepsy. It's been used to treat seizures for a long yeah. time. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, mm -hmm. just to name a few things, and CBD in particular, with um, CBD oil, all kinds of CBD products, which we have, there's salves, there's, there's you know, even um, uh, transdermal patches, mm -hmm. great for pain and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are, there's a, such a world, and that's just one plant. It's, it's crazy, yeah. right? Nature provides everything, everything we need. Everything we need. And it's incredible, and you know, I could go on and on because we use so many different things, yeah. you know, in, in our in our in. And again, these are not even new. These plants have been around for millennia, <laughs> yeah. millennia, and it's just before that before us even way before yeah. us. And it's just that we're rediscovering them today. Yeah. And what we're trying to do, really, at the Alchemist Kitchen, is just, just to hold space for mm -hmm. that to happen because people are guided naturally to this anyway. Yeah. And, and we just want to offer sort of the best in class, you know, whatever we can find, because we, we highly curate whatever we offer there. Yeah. And, you know, and give an opportunity to actually, have an opportunity for people to learn about them. So Evolver Learning Lab now, of course, because we have a space, has live workshops. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can bring all these teachers and we can have events like every night, which we do, every day, every night, and um, allow people to access that information you know, and, and be, really be a gateway for people to discover that for themselves. So we're not here to tell you what to do. We're mm -hmm. here to show you what there is so you can come and find what works for yourself 
or come and learn about what you're interested in. And, and that honestly is, is our mission at mm -hmm. the end of the day, is, you know, is bringing this, a lot of this plant wisdom and the other, and, and not just plant wisdom, but because the company Evolver is, is a little bit beyond that even, is, is what are the different conscious, consciousness modalities mm -hmm. Um, that you can come and discover. So we, for example, we have uh, amazing sound meditations there that we mm. hold. We have cacao ceremonies mm. even. We have, uh, we're gonna have a kava ceremony soon, but we also have all these different workshops for people to learn about, you know, different modalities. So I think what has been fascinating to us is that, you know, you can have as many business plans as you want. Yep. And what we found is really the way things have been developing for us has it's been really revealed every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have business plans, that's how we communicate to the outside world, that's how we raise money, but what's what's interesting is that how many times we've pivoted. Mm -hmm. And not in a haphazard way, but in a very guided way because, oh, we see now, and with any business too, I mean, that happens naturally. Right. It's like, oh, you think this is what's gonna work or these are the particular products that are gonna sell, and it's like, no, it's this is what your audience wants, and we have to pivot a little bit right. to kind of, you know. And I think I just, I am so, I feel very fortunate because I work with, you know, my partners, Lou and Ken, who are amazing. And Ken is the founder, um, one of the founders of Evolver, and, you know, Lou is the, the, is the CEO, and I'm the chief, essentially the chief brand mm -hmm. officer, is, is how we all work together and how, you know, it's a triangle and it works somehow. And it's, it's very balancing because we each bring to it different Aspects. Aspects and different skill sets and, you know, and what I think has allowed us to be successful so far is just listening to what the business wants to be mm -hmm. and listening to what the space wants to be, what people want and yeah. just being guided by that. And, and I swear to God, every step of the way, it's again being in that flow and trusting it. And I think the three of us do all the time because it's just, it just, is very obvious, mm -hmm. and and I think we're all in in a space and time in our life. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this business. Right? Yeah. Who you know who can hold that space and and you know heed the call and heed that call. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. I've I've experienced the same thing with standing light. I had no idea at the beginning what oh, I did. it was just a vision. You know, right. I and mean, you just follow your heart and you right. just keep listening and following. It's that simple, you, really. Exactly. But then <laughs> in the moment, you're it's just like, simple. Why? It's simple, but yes. it's not necessarily easy. No, exactly. Right? That's so, a beautiful distinction. It's so true. Right? Yeah. And, um, and that's why mm -hmm. this brings me to the whole community aspect and why we're even here. Yes. Is because the more we realize, it's like there's a lot of people like us out there. Yeah. In fact, everyone is like, everybody has that, that calling. It's right? a matter of remembering who we really are. Correct. Exactly, and to have a community and just uh, to understand that you're not alone because this is something you know we feel very strongly about at Evolver is being that and space <laughs> and a standing light is 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 to have a place for people to come together yeah. so that you don't feel like a freak exactly you know because we're all kind of freaky yes, right completely and weird so it's like, <laughs> and the, and the fact is you know you should fly your freak flag high. Exactly. You know, and because that's who you are. I was about to say, like, you're even freaky if you're not freaky. Exactly. <laughs> you're totally, so you just exactly. can't, you you can't just win. Can, you can, yeah, you can't win. Or, or you can always win, rather. Exactly. Right? You can always win. And, exactly. And so, you know, that community is very important because when we know that we're not alone mm -hmm. and there's others that are supporting us and they, they a lot of times may not be directly our family members or, or, you know, may not be the people we grew up with, but it doesn't matter yeah. because it's the people who are really aligned energetically. They're your soul family. Exactly, exactly. That is so important to kind of find that group. It took me years, but, you know, thank goodness, but it's mm -hmm. like that's, you know, you draw that when you are when you are living and, and, and projecting that light and projecting your path, that draws people into your life. And, you know, that's exactly what happened to me and mm. I'm sure to you yeah, as well. It has. But that community, I cannot stress enough, is so important. Yeah. And, and just going back to the whole, when I was talking to you earlier about the shamanic plant medicine work, ceremony work, it's not about the plants, yo. It's not about <laughs> that three or four hours of, oh my God, I feel so blissful, or not. It yeah. doesn't matter. What is important is integrating into your daily life and you know, connecting with the people that share those values. Mm -hmm. And that community aspect is what makes this sustainable. Exactly. Because in numbers, then it's like, wow, we can We're change the world, yeah. right? And so that's why we say one person can change the world. It's not, you know. But they have a team behind they them. Because they, they have, they have a, a tribe team, right? around and them. A tribe, and it's about being yourself yeah. and actually finding that tribe and bringing forth what it is that you feel must be brought forth. Mm -hmm. And that community aspect is the most important because that's where it's at. 
So true. Mm -hmm. I mean, this wouldn't be possible without everybody here behind yeah. the camera even, yeah. you know? So mm -hmm. how would you say, so I assume you've gone back to Hong Kong since. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how has that experience been throughout? Because it is so different from what you've grown up with. Mm -hmm. How has that shifted? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, I feel a little bit like an alien. Yeah. When I go back home, I get that. Home. I mean, this is home, New York. Yes. When I go to Hong Kong, I feel it. You know, I've made peace with it because, mm -hmm. again, it's part of who I am. It's mm -hmm. where I grew up. It, it's given me so much, so many gifts, right? And I still have a ton of, you know, family, and you know, most of my family's there, and many of my friends, and you know, I still connect with them. I don't, you know, it. I, I I'm myself when yeah. I'm there, but I also find that. You know, there's certain things. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, I wouldn't share necessarily so readily. Yeah. I kind of have to kind of see where they're at and be mm -hmm. mindful where they're at because sometimes, you know, it may not make sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and I also honestly believe it is um, a good idea to always respect where everyone is at. 100%. So sometimes people choose this way sometimes people choose to remain where they are and that's okay because that's their path mm -hmm. and you know I, I find there's this usually this huge sense of enthusiasm when you discover you're waking up and you're like oh my god I just want to share with everybody I want to share with everybody and I want to make everybody and you, you you know you want to evangelize almost but you know sometimes you got to let that go because it the most important thing is really for you to shine because when you do that, people see that, they mm -hmm. feel it. It emanates automatically. It, you don't need to kind of go boop, boop, Push boop. it, you yeah. You don't need to push it. Just stand in it, and then whoever Standing is on it. Exactly. Exactly, and that's that. But honestly, that is so true. And, um, you know, I know that there are certain people in my life that have a very, you know, they live in it. It's, it's, it's really hard, I think, with people you love when you see that they're stuck. Yeah but they're not necessarily open to other options. Mm -hmm. And you know, you beat yourself, because you're like, oh my God, like I've tried to get them to see the light and it doesn't work and it's, it's but that's okay mm -hmm. because they're in their own rhythm yes. and it's okay. And I think all we can do is just to be, be there in a loving manner and to listen and just hold space. Yeah. And the holding space aspect is something also was, I think, a huge learning for me. And it's, it's not about trying to change someone, it's about holding the space for change to happen mm -hmm. and transformation to happen. You can't be attached to them changing because no. that's it's it's detrimental right. to you and them right. as well. And and that's in many ways arrogant and, and yes. egotistical in many ways because it's Absolutely. like saying, hey, my way's better than your way. How do we know? Exactly. We don't know, right? Yeah. So um, so there's that there's that aspect as well. So going home is a little a little strange to me. Um, yeah, so I'm much happier, I think, just being here because I can really be myself. And again, I think Hong Kong, Hong Kong's interesting. It's shifting too, a lot. Yeah. I was just the there. Society, yeah. right? Um, but like I said, it's a more conservative um, society mm -hmm. and wonderful people. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, that this wave that we've been talking about is happening there as well in a different way. Right. So it's happening. Um, but, uh, you know, it'll take its own time and that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> They say, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I want to leave you with um, the question, what is light style to you? What is light style to me? Mm. Is really understanding, wow, when I hear the word light, so many things come to mind. Um, mm -hmm following the light with that's within you, connecting to it first, because we all have that, right. and really feeling that and um, connecting to it. And then when there's not light, I think that's what I want to talk about, because sometimes you just don't feel so cheery. You right. can't, you know, it's not always joy, joy, joy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I think that that, um, that's why I love the movie Inside Out. Oh, yeah. It's the best. It is. I love it. If you guys haven't seen it, you have to. It's amazing because it talks about how important sadness is. Right. Because it's the flip side of, of joy. Love, of yeah. joy, right? But it's the same thing. Yeah. Because you can't have one without the other, mm -hmm. and it's the full gamut of our emotional spectrum. spectrum. And that, you know, to embrace that as well. And, you know, what I've found that's, that's lovely that, you know, because lifestyle to me means lifestyle, light, 
lifestyle, right? And what that means is that even when you're angry or you're frustrated or you're sad or you're in despair to go, hey, that's fine because I'm, I'm, I'm processing something. And to just simply stay with that, honor it, and allow it to happen because then you can really move through it. Mm -hmm. And then also understanding that all the shadow stuff that comes up, that's part of you too. And to embrace that and to not disassociate with that because, dis disassociate from that rather because, it, you know, the shadow is part of who we are. It, it you know, the, one of my teachers always used to say, the greatest light contains the darkest shadow and the darkest light contain a darkest shadow contains the brightest light, always. There's always one, and that's like, if you think about the, the yin-yang symbol, yep. the dot, the little white dot within the black the sort of thing, and the little black dot within the oh, white. Oh, that's so beautiful. Right. I never thought of it that way, yeah. but yeah. And that's, uh, from my standpoint at yeah. least, that's what it means. Wow. And because that's, that's and always to remember that. So mm. the most humble person can be the most arrogant person. The Absolutely. most arrogant person has a, cert a really deep humility. It's, you know, that's, that's kind of what the we have to remember. Yeah, the balance. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's gorgeous. Thank you for leaving us with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. And it's yeah. so great to, to be here and to be able to share. And I'm so honored that you would ask me even to, to do this. Of course. I'm honored <laughs> that you did come and do this and share this with us. So thank, thank you, you for sharing your light you, with Mabel. us and your journey. And you guys, if, you haven't, if you're in New York and you haven't been to the Alchemist Kitchen yet, go. Um, we'll put a link below and go say hi to Stephanie if she's there. <laughs> I'm always there, so please come and say hello. We'd love to see you there. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. If you guys like this episode of the Lifestyle Interview Series, please share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to hit subscribe.